Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting cute autumn dog and I'm sipping on some pomegranate tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks such as this one. So this painting that I did today is inspired by a photo that was sent in by one of my Patreon members by the, na by the name of Becky Palin. And I have this benefit for my Patreon members whereby I put a call out for photos every now and again. I'll select some of those, turn them into YouTube tutorials, and the whoever sent in the photo, I send the original painting off to them as a thank you. So I hope she enjoys this painting. <laughs> so if you're interested in learning how you too could submit your own photos for me to turn into tutorials and or learn more about the Patreon membership program where there's a bunch of painting benefits that you get to enjoy, I have all of that information down below in the video description. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, deep yellow, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, fire red, Mars black, burnt sienna, which sometimes I call rust, and chrome orange. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'm gonna be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. And I have a number 10 and a number three round synthetic brushes. And I might refer to these as small, medium, and large as I go through the painting process, or I'll just call them out as they're supposed to be called out by their names. Um, if you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase from my shop things individually like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna paint the wall, <laughs> which is in essence gonna be our base coat for the canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a nice neutral gray tone that I'll be using for the background. And I will be using that for the majority of the background, but I'm gonna get the top left-hand corner to go a little bit lighter uh, to have the illusion of a light source off to the top left. So I have pre-mixed myself my custom color on my palette, which is right here. I'm gonna use my large brush to paint, but my small brush to, pre to show you how to mix this paint. So this is the color I'm going for. It's a little bit of white, not a lot. The white will take over and it'll make it really, really light. So I just add a little bit of white a little bit of black and a good amount of brown because the brown will neutralize it and make it a nice um, kind of warm gray, not a cool gray. So this will add a, a good uh, dimensional element to the painting. So that's a little bit dark and a little bit cool for me. So I'm gonna add a touch more white, a little bit more white in through there and then a touch more brown. So you can adjust it however you want. You can even take it and um, put a little bit on your canvas and let it dry to see how it's gonna look. It may turn out a little bit darker as it dries. It might turn a little bit browner than you wanted, so you can certainly test it out. But once you've got a color that you like, what I'm gonna do is put my mixing tool away, take out my large brush. I'm gonna pick up some of that custom gray 
plus a scoop of white or a good amount of white. I have about equal parts of both on my brush and I'm going to start up in this top left hand corner. So what I'm in essence doing is I'm going to create a little bit of a light source up here in this left hand corner of the canvas. So this way it's going to end up looking like there's maybe a light on in the room or something of that nature. Now I'm just going to pick up my gray, my custom gray, and get it to blend in around these edges. And I don't need it to be super perfect or anything like that, as, but as it's, as it's um, kind of drying on my canvas, you'll see what I do to get it to blend a little bit more. But right now I'm just picking up my gray, and this is the color I'm going to use for the rest of the canvas. So once I get into um, the darker version of the gray, I can be a little bit more flexible with the brush stroke that I'm using because it is a pretty, uh, it's a cup of color that covers pretty well on the canvas. So once it's dry, you won't really detect the um, brush stroke. So you can really use any brush stroke as it's coming down here. If you're, by the time you're in the vicinity I'm in, if your paint is almost dry up here, what you can do, just wipe your brush off on your paper towel and you can take with a very light pressure and just kind of um, continue to blend that paint into the darker area. So sometimes I'll let it dry just a, a you know a minute or two in order to um, allow myself to just softly blend it. You could do this with a, a softer brush too if you have like a um, like a filver or something that has softer bris bristles that are more on the round side. But I like to just kind of use my, my bristle brush and I'll allow it to soften as, or uh, allow myself to add these soft brush strokes to it as, as it's drying. So it's just a nice way to, to blend it out. So that's looking pretty good to me. So I just pick back up my, dark, my darker version of the gray or my custom version of the gray and then I'm just gonna finish painting the whole canvas. If your blend up in that top left-hand corner didn't work out exactly as you had hoped it would, you can do this entire process on a second layer. Just go, let this dry, and do a second layer onto the canvas, and that will help um, soften that gradient out a little bit. So, but that'll be your call. Uh, the majority of the, the um, paint down in through here is going to have different colors on it later. We're just using it as a base coat for the dog and the flower um, barrel and all that good stuff. So down here doesn't matter if it's perfect or not, but if you need that gradient to be a little bit smoother, you can certainly do a second uh, coat on that. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be using our drawing utensil for the next step. So you can just uh, put this large brush away, do any soft blending that you feel is necessary, put this large brush away, take out something to draw with, and get ready for the next step. Alright, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be drawing an outline for our objects. So this is going to be the dog, the flowers, and the wooden basket barrel thing that this cute dog is sitting in. <laughs> I'm going to be using my chalk to draw. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that is comfortable to you. I'm going to be guiding you through a series of markers. We're going to connect those markers which will form into some very basic shapes that we'll be able to utilize during our painting in process. So we're not going for any fine-tuned detail, just something that we'll be able to use to make sure that things are in proportion and that we have some nice block sections to use when we start painting the objects. <laughs> so I'm going to guide you to find the center of your canvas. So for me, top to bottom, left to right, the center of my canvas is somewhere right about here. Oh, and it, it'll be easier if your canvas is dry before you start this step too. So make sure your canvas is dry. So once you've found the center of your canvas, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up from that, I would say about three inches from that center, and then over about an inch and a half. It's going to be my first marker. We're making the head, the shape of the head, which is kind of an oval, but it's kind of an awkward oval and it's tipped to the side a little bit. So once I've got that marker, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up from here about half that distance, so maybe about an inch, inch and a half, and then I'm going to go all the way over to the left until I'm about two inches away from the edge of my canvas. Give myself another marker. These are going to represent the widest parts on the head. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down from here about, I would say about an inch and over to the left, I would say maybe about an inch and a half to two inches. This is going to represent kind of the, the center of the bottom of the head. And then I can go straight up from here, travel straight up until I'm about four inches from the top of my canvas. So the, we're going to connect these markers. The head is going to be a little bit kind of shallower and um, of a pointier round at the top than it is at the bottom. The bottom is going to be kind of um, flatter and it's going to be at a little bit of an angle. So I'm going to take from here and I'm going to kind of go down and then right about when I'm at that halfway mark, that's when I can start curving it. And then it's like a slightly diagonal line downward. And then right about here, which is maybe an inch and a half before I meet this marker, I'm going to start curving it back up. So something like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit this marker up here. So I'm going to go curve it towards that side, a continual curve, hit my marker continuing to curve, and then come back down in through here. So it's a little bit you know, more pointy at the top, and it doesn't have to be exactly this shape. This is just going to give you a good representation of the particular puppy dog that I am painting. So I'm going to guide you through the shape of the basket as well, and then we're going to connect the head to the basket with the body. So I'm going to find myself the bottom left hand corner of my canvas, and I'm going to come up about two, two and a half inches somewhere in this area. And I'm going to do the same thing over on the right hand side. I'm going to come up at about the same height, but I'm going to come in just a little bit. And then I'm going to give myself a diagonal line down towards the bottom of my canvas like that. And then I'm going to connect here to here with a slightly curved line, a slightly downward curved line. So something like this. Then I'm going to connect the head to the basket. So I'm going to come in from here about, uh, about an inch and a half, give myself a marker. And then I'm going to go directly to the right of this halfway marker, right over into here. Give myself a marker there. I'm going to connect here to here. This is going to be kind of the side of the body and then the, um, the little leg area. So just like this and then dip it and then out like this. A lot of the body of this dog is kind of disguised or hidden behind the flower. So we're kind of seeing just the front front on. So on this left hand side, I'm going to come in about one to almost three inches, give myself the marker and I can go straight up from here and then just travel up that um, head up about another inch somewhere in through here and connect these two, something like that. So now all I need to do is put on some ears and some flowers and we'll be done. So I'm going to find myself back up at that where we had make it, made this kind of marker up here and I'm going to go, uh, I guess I could start it maybe just a touch to the right of that. And then I'm going to travel down about two and a half inches to somewhere in through here. So this, if we're looking at it in relationship to the marker that we did here, I'm up maybe about an inch and a half from that. Then I'm going to go straight up from this marker until I'm about almost an inch away from the can, the top of the canvas and go to the left just a little bit. That'll be the tip of the ear. So I can take from here, bump it out like that, give myself a cute little tip to the ear and then take this down like that. The other ear is going to be pretty darn similar, but not exact. So I'm going to come to the left of here, maybe about um, two and a half inches somewhere in through here. And then again, you can find yourself this marker that you made down here and come up about an inch and a half somewhere in through here. And the tip of this one, you can just find yourself the top left hand corner and come down maybe about two, two and a half inches and then in about half of an inch to three quarters somewhere in through there. And then I can connect here to here to the tip like that and then just give myself a little tip like that and bring it back down in through there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to section off my flowers. So there's some sunflowers down at the bottom and then there's some red flowers at the top. I don't know what the red flowers are, so we're just going to call them red flowers. <laughs> the bottom ones definitely look like some form of sunflower to me though. So I'm going to find myself about halfway between here and here, which is somewhere into here. And then I'm going to make myself some bumps like this, something like that. And then I'm going to come out from here and I'll connect it to here with some more bumps. So the top section is going to represent the red flowers and the bottom one is going to represent the yellow ones. 
So on this side, I'm going to come about almost halfway between here and here, so somewhere in through here. And then I'm up higher than this marker for the outside. So if I go to the edge of my canvas and then come up about two inches, that'll give me the top. And then I can start making myself some, just some fun, um, curvy type of lines that are going to represent the, the petals on the flower. And then for the red section that's going to go above that, I'm going to come back to that marker that I made on the head right here and come down about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch, something like that. And then you can just go straight over to the left hand side and maybe up just a smudge. And then you can connect these with a whole bunch of um, petally type of shapes. So again, I'm mimicking the um, photo that I'm, that I'm looking at for the um, shape of these objects, but you could certainly modify yours um, any way that you want. There is kind of a little section in through here that's not connected, so I'm going to just close this off. This will be, uh, we need a section for that flower, so that works. And then you can make any little fiddling adjustments that you want. We are going to be using, um, I think we're going to use our large, I think I'm going to use my large brush for the next step. So you can just put your drawing utensil away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat for all of our objects. I'm going to use my large bristle brush uh, to paint, but I'm going to use my number three round to premix a custom color. I'm not going to have a lot of custom colors um, to make, I don't think, but I definitely want to have a almost like a blonde type of color for the dog. So as I go through the process, I'll be able to use that as um, a connecting color with all of the with all of the fur. So the colors I'm going to use in this step are black, white, red, yellow, brown, and burnt sienna. So the only color I'm not using is orange. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing the top flowers. I'm just going to put a base coat of red. These flowers in through here, I'm going to put a base coat of yellow. However, because I'm on gray, it's going to see the yellow or see the gray through it. So it's going to be a fun um, tonal color that we're going to be able to use as we build those flowers. I'm going to be using brown for the bucket and then I'm going to be using burnt sienna for the ears and the paws, which we haven't identified yet, but we'll do that in a minute. And I'm going to use my custom color, my custom um, blondish color that I'm using for the head um, and then on the body, I'll be using that blonde plus a little bit of black and or brown. So I'll show you how this is all going to work out. <laughs> so what I'm first going to do is pre-mix myself that blonde color. So I have pre-mixed it on my palette here, and I'm just calling it blonde for lack of a better. I could call it light brown. I could call it gold, but it looks like blonde hair to me, so I'm going to call it blonde. <laughs> so I've got this color here. How I achieved this was a lot of brown a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of white. And that's going to give me this really neutral um, color that I'll be able to use in the fur. I need more yellow in that, that's a little bit too pink for me, um, that I'll be able to use as a, uh, a dominant force within this fur. So this looks pretty good to me. So once I've got that, I'm ready to rock and roll. So I'm actually going to be doing my red flowers first. So I'm going to pick up some red paint. I don't need any special brush stroke at this point. Um, these flowers are uh, the, the whole um, composition that I'm looking at, the photo that I'm looking at, is really out of focus. Um, even the dog isn't in focus. <laughs> We're going to try and create some extra dimensional um, elements as we paint, but um, the photo I'm looking at definitely uh, has a lot of out of focus stuff, so I'm just going to not worry about the details in these flowers. I really am just looking for them to be nice and impressionistic. You could if you felt the need to as you're getting around these guys in through here if you wanted to pull out a smaller brush, that's totally fine, but I'm just going to kind of pop my brush around these guys and then just paint this in with red. And again, my paint is transparent, so it, this red is going to turn darker as it dries because of that gray that's underneath. So that's looking pretty good for that section. So now I'm going to wash and dry my brush. 
and I'm gonna color in the, um, I think I'm gonna give that red a second to dry. So I'm gonna color in this bottom section, the bucket with brown paint. So I don't need to do anything fancy here. I'm just gonna take this right across. We're gonna add all kinds of fun dimensional elements to this bucket as we go through the process, but this is um, just gonna start, start it for us. And then I'm just gonna come down here. And if you can see some of your gray through the brown, that's awesome because it can look like a weathered, <laughs> a weathered bucket, that's totally fine. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to paint in the yellow flowers. So wash and dry my brush. Now I'm going to pick up some yellow. And again, you're going to see that I'm, I'm really not doing any fancy brush stroke here, just kind of giving myself the, um, the start of what's going to be some fun flowers and all this other kind of information in here. So that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. So I'm running the risk of running into some wet red paint. Totally okay with that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna kind of pop this up in these cute little um, kind of jagged type of motion, just kind of pushing my brush right up into those little um, marks like that. And then I can just paint this whole thing in. And again, it doesn't have to be anything perfect. You can, right now I'm loading the paint on pretty heavy with, um, a very messy paint stroke so that way as I go through the process maybe I'll have some good textural elements to it. Uh, I'm going to get rid of those little squiggly lines. There we go. So just kind of tapping the paint in like that. And this, this is going to have a lot of dark spots in it as well. So as you go through this we're going to some of that's going to disappear anyways. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, I think I'm going to put my ears on and my paws and then I'll put the rest of the fur on. So I wash and dry my brush. I'm going to pick up some burnt sienna and I'm just going to do a base coat of burnt sienna for these cute little ears. And I don't need this to be a heavy coat of paint. This is just going to set the stage as, again as I build those layers to, um, to the fur. This burnt sienna is going to give me a different tone underneath my um, underneath the fur so the ears and the paws will end up looking a little bit different than than the rest. So these paws kind of um, go over the the edge of the bucket a little bit. Um, I will definitely modify them more later but I'm just going to pull this little little bit of a oval type of shape in through there and then maybe just a little bit more over that and then the same thing over on this side. This side the paw looks a little bit um, like we're seeing it at a little bit different of an angle so it's leaning over the bucket a little bit but it looks a little smaller from this angle um, so that's what I'm gonna emulate because that's what I'm seeing in the photo. So now I have a decision if I want to wash my brush or not. Um, I think I'm going to not wash my brush and I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black paint and I'm gonna uh, put some dark fur underneath this head in through here. So I, I have the burnt sienna on my brush plus a little bit of black paint. You could, again, if you were nervous about um, the burnt sienna kind of taken away from any information, you could certainly wash your brush, but we got lots of stuff to go on this, so I wouldn't be too, too nervous at this point. Um, and then once I kind of get down in through here, maybe I'll put a little of this down at the bottom in through here, just give myself some dark tones. Now I can start picking up the, um, that custom color. So I'm without washing my brush, I'm going to just pick up that custom, um, tan or uh, blonde type of color and just kind of bring it in a little bit of a directional brush stroke in order to overlap it into um, the other fur that I had just put on there. If you don't get yours to look exactly like mine at this point, don't worry because again, this is just the first layer. I'm gonna walk you through making this cute little um, dog look like a look like a dog. <laughs> so again, as we're as we're building these initial layers, if it's a building process and if you haven't done this before and this is your first time trying to tackle an animal with um, multiple colors in the fur, this is a, a challenging um, 
endeavor that you're embarking upon <laughs> with so many different colors in this fur but um just know i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna walk you through everything and then you know lots of room to to modify and make um adjustments as we go so that looks pretty good down there i'm gonna do a similar process on the top i'm just gonna pick up a tiny bit of black paint on my dirty brush so I do see on the face that there are some darker areas that I kind of just want to start and a couple of them are right by these ears. So I just want to take a tiny bit of black and just kind of pull it in, in through this area so I have a little bit of um, darkness back in through here just to start that process. Um, there's also quite a bit in the, in the bottom portion of the face. So just kind of putting a little bit of darkness in through there so I can start that process. I'm also gonna just kind of make myself a little area where I'm thinking that the nose-ish is gonna go and then the um, just these kind of circular marks for where the eye sockets are gonna go. Oh, he thinks it's really funny right now. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should just call it on this one and leave it like this. Oh my God, that looks so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I'm just using my dirty brush too. Oh gosh. You know, sometimes it just, it, these are the fun things about painting is, you know, you go through the process and, you know, you start in the mouth and it's like, oh, well, that looks cute just like that. I'm picking up some burnt sienna uh, and I know that there's a lot of burnt sienna around the mouth. So I'm just going to put some um, pull it in my directional brush stroke. I didn't wash my brush, so I'm just uh, taking the burnt sienna and just kind of pulling it around that, what's gonna be the mouth, there's a little bit underneath that nose, there's a little bit around the nose. So as I am building this, I don't always do it in um, this fashion, where, but there's so many color variations in this little dog that I, I felt it would be an easier building process to kind of get these um, sections of colors almost identified before we start um, we, before we start building big details onto it. So that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to just pick up my um, my blonde color and finish out this layer. So I picked up my blonde on my dirty brush, and I'm just going to kind of bring it out in the direction that I feel that this fur is going on the face. So it's definitely around the eyes kind of going like this. On the, the edges of the nose, it kind of pops out and right behind that nose. On the nose, I don't know what it's doing. It's going in all kinds of different directions, but there's a little section uh, in through here that it, I can't even tell if it's going up or down, but we're just gonna kind of put it vertically. <laughs> and then there's some coming in through here and kind of wrapping around the face on this side. So I don't have a lot of paint on my brush and I'm using my brush in a directional brush stroke. So just pulling it in the direction that I feel that that fur is going in that specific area. On the top of the head, I have no idea what it's doing. I think it's um, kind of a textured, soft look. So I'm gonna just kind of tap my brush with dots up and through here and then um, I can see that it kind of pulls over on these sides like this. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I think I'm going to put a tiny bit of white on this before I call it on this step. Uh, that's so cute. <laughs> I'm picking up an itty bitty bit of white. And when I say itty bitty, just a teeny tiny bit on the tip of my brush. And just going to kind of start that little light process right in through there and right in through here. So that's all I'm going to do for this step. I am going to be using my uh, medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash or you can put that brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the barrel. I'm gonna be using my number 10 round brush. The colors I'm gonna use are black, brown, yellow, probably burnt sienna, white, and I might go into some of that blonde color too, if I feel the need to. So again, I'm using a photo reference to guide me through this. So I'm gonna be doing it similar to the reference, but of course you can change this up whatever way that you would like. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of um, watered down black paint on my brush. So I just put a little bit of water on my brush, picked up a touch of black paint. I'm gonna give myself the separation between, there's like a wooden 
uh, band at the top versus the slats to it. So I'm going to come down about halfway between here and here, give myself a little marker, and do the same thing over on this side. And of course it doesn't have to be exactly even, just whatever works for you, and then just connect those with that a similar kind of um, arcing line that you had up towards the top. And I mean, I'm using this more as just a guide um, for what I'm gonna do in the bottom half of this so I don't go too high. Um, that works for me. So now I'm going to take some additional black paint with less water on my brush and I'm gonna put these little kind of peekaboo spots um, throughout the barrel. So I'm gonna just make these little dark slats. I'm using a vertical brush stroke to um, create these. They're probably about um, um, maybe a half of an inch wide, but they don't have to be exactly the same in width. But if you want it to look like the barrel tapers down, I think the trick is going to be to um, make these left hand side ones kind of slant this way, do a center one that's, that's just um, vertical like this and then uh, do the ones on the right hand side at a little bit of an angle in the opposite direction. That, that'll give you the, the perspective, even on this small kind of detail, if you can um, get those little nuances, it just explains more to the viewer as they're looking at it. So that looks pretty good in through there. And then if you wanted any little dark spots in the wood grain, you could use a little bit of that watered down um, black and you can just kind of like make these little tiny marks. There's also a, a what appears to be where um, this band kind of um, overlaps itself in through here so I'm gonna just kind of make myself a dark little line like that and then there's a couple of little knots in the wood in through here. Those aren't necessary but if you wanted to have them feel free to do so. A couple of little dark areas down here. So the the wood in the photo is pretty um, kind of burnt sienna type color on the bottom half. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna pick up both burnt sienna and my yellow at the same time on my brush. And I'm gonna do these vertical stripes in this bottom section. So again, you're gonna see some of that brown through my um, through my paint which is fine because that's going to make it look like it has multiple kind of um, tones to that wood grain itself. And of course you could, you know, start it out horizontally like that and then just kind of pull it down, whatever works. It doesn't necessarily have to be vertical. This is just kind of what I'm seeing um, in the photo. So that's why I'm using this type of brush stroke. And of course, some areas can be lighter or darker than others, and it might not even translate as vertical stripes um, once you get it all said and done. But if you um, start it out in that manner, and maybe, maybe on the um, center ones, maybe this is where you pick up a little bit of that um, blonde color and pop in a couple of little lighter marks. So you can certainly make that into um, whatever you want. That's looking pretty good to me, so I'm gonna move up to the um, top section. And you can do multiple layers on this too. If you want it to be more um, dramatic, you can certainly make it more dramatic. So on the top part, I'm seeing some of the burnt sienna and rust kind of color over on this right-hand side. So I'm gonna pick up some burnt sienna and my yellow, and I'm gonna just kind of go left to right in this section. Um, again, my paint is transparent, so it will see those dark marks underneath it. I'm just gonna bring this right to the edge in through here. I'm seeing some of that color a little bit over on this side. So I just picked up a little bit of the Burnt Sienna. And as I get towards the center, I'm seeing a lot of the light tones. So I'm gonna pick up some of that blonde color uh, and brown on my brush. So the blonde and brown, and just kind of allowing for this to um, take on a nice wood grain kind of texture, just kind of wiggling my brush left to right. I am leaving a little bit of that um, darker mark underneath. <laughs> I'm pointing up here. I was looking at my palette and pointing at my canvas. So this dark line that I made, I'm leaving a little bit of that um, in order to imply that there's a shadow 
underneath this um, this wood grain band. So I'm bringing this right to this edge in through here, and then I'll put a little bit of it over onto here. And again, yours could be much more or less than mine. That's going to be totally up to you. You could do one layer and then come back and say, I want to do, I want to do more to it. That's up to you. I'm putting a little bit more in through here. I don't really like that mark in through there. It's a bit too much. So I'm just gonna, gonna let it kind of disappear in there. That looks pretty good. And then there's a real light line up at the top of this. So I'm actually going to use yellow and white on my brush at the same time. So yellow and white, and I'm going to give myself, especially between these paws, I'm going to give myself a, a pretty light um, line right up and through here. And this might be one of those details that you might need to um, uh, tweak as you go through the process because we, we haven't done our dog yet and when we go to do that fur you're probably going to bump into this little edge in through here so if that happens to you don't don't worry about it you can certainly bend it and tweak it as much as you need to um, the yellow is a little bit too harsh for me too so i'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt sienna especially as i come over towards this right hand side and then you can certainly take the burnt sienna and just kind of go over it just to give yourself like mine was a little bit too yellow for me so a little bit of burnt sienna helps to rectify that and then you can of course make any little fiddling adjustments like I feel like I probably am going to want to make this a little bit lighter in the front so burnt sienna yellow white little kind of tap marks with my brush that's going to give me some good texture in through there and then once you've got this um, as much as you want again it's going to be lighter in this front and darker as it goes towards the edge we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so i'm just going to probably fiddle with mine for another minute and then i will wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint or finish our red flowers. I'm gonna be using my uh, medium number 10 round brush. The colors I'm gonna use are black, red, orange, yellow, and white. If I go into any other colors, I might go into brown, but if I go into any other colors, I'll let you know. So again, I don't need to do a whole heck of a lot on these. I want to put a little bit of shadow, especially where um, the flower on this side meets the dog. There's a couple of shadowy areas on these guys. It almost looks like they might be poppies with the big floppy red um, leaves and the dark black center because there's a little bit of darkness in through here and then there's some darkness down um, back in through here. So I'll put and a little bit in through here too where like some front petals are, um, you can see the edges of front petals versus the inside petals. So I'm gonna work my way from dark to light and um, by the time we're done, we'll have some out of focus red flowers. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with a teeny bit of black and red paint on my brush. So again, just an itty bitty bit of both. The black can really overpower and if you just go in full on with black, you're gonna take away all this red and it's gonna be tough to get it back. So black with a little bit of red paint, or uh, yes, a little bit of black with red paint, but both tiny bit on my brush. I'm gonna put a little bit of shadow right in through here. So just a itty bitty bit, maybe a little bit kind of coming in through here, not a lot, and just rub it into that into that red next to it. So that looks good over on that side. On here, I'm gonna do the same thing, a little bit of red, a little bit of black, just a itty bitty bit. Um, there's a real dark area right in here, which I will make darker in a minute, but I wanna just get myself the, um, the idea of where it is, and then I can make it even darker, because I wanna just be able to control myself right now with this, um, dark version but not black so this is again red plus a tiny bit of black on my brush giving myself these little kind of dark tones of it in through here maybe maybe pop it in between some of these petals as well back in through here but not a lot just a little bit something like that and then it looks like there might be a little bit up in through here 
So there's almost like a light edge to um, a couple of the, the petals in through there. And then I can just kind of get this to merge just using a circular brush stroke to work it off of my brush and get those little dark marks in through there. I feel like there should be another little bit of darkness in through here. So just using the remnants of the black plus a touch of red on my brush to get a little bit darker in through here. Not much, you can see how I'm really just controlling it by using very little bit of paint, mostly red right now, plus a touch of the black. So that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna deepen this little black mark right in through here with just a little bit more black on my brush. So right in through here, just deepen that just a tiny, tiny bit. I can even get it to just kind of work its way out just a little bit, give myself um, some of those additional tones. So once that's uh, settling over there, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna come over here to this guy. And this is where I'm gonna be using uh, red, orange, yellow, and white to just get myself to the little bright tips of this um, flower. So I'm gonna start with a red. And for me, I'm seeing a lot of red kind of right in through here. So I'm just gonna put some red in through there, close off this little gap by the, um, by the body. Now I'm gonna, I just wipe my brush off. I'm picking up a little bit of orange, working my way towards that tip allowing myself to let the orange and the red talk to each other. So I'm letting them blend in with each other. I am using quite a bit of paint too. So it's just giving it a nice kind of full feeling to it. And then right, this is where I can get rid of my, um, my guidelines too. If you have any little bits of chalk showing or any little guidelines around the edge, you can just get rid of those. Now I'm gonna pick up, I'm just wiping my brush off. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of yellow and white, just a itty bitty bit of both colors cause I'm seeing that there's a little kind of highlight over here. So just a little, little itty bitty bit. Well, that was a lot. <laughs> I just wiped my brush off. Just kind of back that off a little bit. So something like that. And then I can just add a little tiny bit of yellow right on top of that. There we go. That looks pretty good. Just get it to blend out a little bit because that was a little aggressive for my, <laughs> for my liking. There we go, that works. And that's all I'm gonna do to that side. I'm gonna do a similar process over on the other side. So wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna start with my red paint and just make sure it's as red as I want it, wherever I want it. Um, so definitely where it's meeting the, um, the puppy, just make sure, or the dog. <laughs> I don't know how old this dog is, so <laughs> I don't know if puppy is the right terminology. Um, so it's pretty darn light in through here, which I'll probably add some orange to that. This is all looking pretty good to me in through here. And then I've got some, some little, little petals kind of popping out in through here and here. So I'm just kind of laying that red down right now just to make sure that it's um, there. Up in through here, I've got my shadows. That works. I need some more red up and through here. And again, I'm just watching my photo and saying, where where am I seeing red? Where am I seeing orange? Because on this particular photo, it's these red flowers are so out of focus that I really am having a difficult time discerning what's what in them. So I'm really just looking for some color patterns. So I see that there's lots of red in through here and in through here. And if my flower grows in a different direction, that's okay. So that's good for the red. Now I'm gonna um, just start working my way to the bright. So I'm just washing my brush and picking up some of my orange. So again, where am I seeing my, my, my bright stuff? I feel like there's kind of this petal in through here. So I'm gonna just lay down some of this orange and just kind of allow that to happen. There's a bunch up in through here. So I'm, again, I'm using pretty heavy paint right now, just letting that orange almost lay on top of the red and giving it um, this nice dimensional element but still pretty painterly in my opinion just kind of letting the orange talk to the red where I see these bright pops I see um, some orange right along this edge in through here and again I can't really tell what's what on here so I'm just going with what the colors that I'm seeing so that looks pretty good in through there. And then there's a couple, what seems to be like um, the tips of petals in through here. So I'm gonna just kind of 
put these little kind of orange um, colors and <laughs> right here that looks pretty good it's it you know when you can when you don't know exactly what it is that you're seeing it's tough to go through the process and say okay well i'm going to paint this because it is this you know i i'm not quite sure exactly what i'm seeing so i i've got to kind of um determine or, or or figure it out on my own so in through here this is a, should be a little bit softer of a gradient so that looks pretty good now I'm just gonna pick up my yellow and white so this is where I'm gonna get those little bright pops of highlights on um, the tip so I see that there's one in through here so again this is just kind of yellow and white popping these little bright um, tips to some of these petals I'm seeing this one definitely has one in through here and I'm working wet on wet so this means um, that I'm kind of allowing for these colors to blend as I go because I haven't waited for them to dry and like my orange is still wet underneath here so I'm just putting that yellow and white on top of it and putting in the 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 um, section of color and kind of blending it out into that neighboring um, section that is still wet as well and you might if if um, the wet on wet isn't quite um, a, a way that you want to go at this point you could certainly just let it dry and then put these little highlight um, markings on top I feel like I want a little bit more red right in through here like there's a little maybe edge of a petal in through there and then I would let it dry and then I'm going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once it dries, you might find that you want to accentuate the highlights a little bit more. Maybe you want to bring a little bit more red into it. Maybe you want to bring more darkness into it. Whatever works for you is totally fine by me. And then we're going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it. If you can ever stop making flowers, wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our orange, or our yellow flowers. I'm gonna be using my medium round. The colors I'm gonna use are definitely black, yellow, white, and red and orange. If I use any of the colors, I'll let you know. So I'm gonna approach these similarly to how I did the red flowers, which is I'm gonna start with my dark areas and work my way to the light. Um, because there's some pretty drastic dark areas on these guys, not only for the centers, which are almost black, but also the little shadowy areas underneath them. So again, I'm, I'm watching my picture and I'm just going to kind of put the dark areas in where I see them in the picture. There's also some leaves in between these flowers. So there's like a leaf in between here that I'm seeing. And then there's a couple of leaves in between here too that I'm, I'm seeing. So I've got my black, excuse me, excuse me, black watered down paint on my brush. On this side over here, I'm gonna put a real dark area in through here where it's meeting my, my doggy. So right up to this um, line in through here. And then you could almost even bring this pretty, pretty close to the edge of the um, canvas over here on the left hand side and then I'm going to give myself this little um, section something like this and then it appears as if it um, it's kind of the bottom it might be the bottom side of the flower or something in through here and then all this section in through here is kind of like a leaf of sorts so I'm going to just um, use this black wiping it off on my paper towel and just kind of rub it into that um, it was a yellow section but it does look a bit green so I'm gonna I'm gonna play with that and let that kind of take its take itself into that impressionistic kind of leaf place <laughs> so something like that I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit more of my black there's a little section in through here a little peekaboo section that I can see um, for the center of the flower and it's also kind of um, allowing me to almost identify the edge <laughs> of some of the little petals. So I'm going to just put a little bit of darkness in through here. So that works like that. And then I think that's all the super dark area I want on this side. Uh, yeah, just kind of 
blend that in a little bit more. Then on this side over here, I'm going to go for um, the, the edge that's next to my dog first. So this is going to be this entire bottom portion in through here. And then I would say somewhere around here, you can just kind of take and give yourself a couple of um, curved marks like that to be the edge of um, one of the bigger flowers that we're going to see on that side. And then where it meets the dog, it doesn't need to be a solid line. You can really get it to be kind of messy as it's, as it's touching the dog. That'll make it look a little bit more natural. We are, of course, going to be refining the fur along that dog as well but you can as you touch it you can get it to be messy and then there's a big flower right here so and there and it sits right next to some leaves so i can just take from here and almost just kind of outline what i want those petals to to appear uh, for this particular flower this is going to be our easy one <laughs> so something like this will give me that and then i can take this same color and kind of outline what I want for the top ones. So I'm in essence creating this dark section in the middle that will be um, the leaves, but it's really dark in the photo, so it's allowing me to just kind of um, create these, these sections uh, of color, and then I can just kind of co color in this sec center section. And if I do need any um, or want any of the green from the leaves to pop, a little bit more I can like they are on the other side I can certainly do that in a minute but right now just looking to really just get my sections um, and if and if I'm fortunate enough to have a little green still showing great if not I'm totally not worried so that looks pretty good I'm gonna now put a center in this flower on this one right here so I'm gonna have it curved up on this top side messy but curved and then on the bottom side, it's meeting some, some leaves that are kind of curled up. So I'm going to just give myself a little wavy line at the bottom. You could make it look straight on, but again, I'm following a photo, so I'm doing it as I see it in the, in the photo. There's another uh, big center up in through here. So I'm going to just take this. Again, it's a similar process to this one. I can take and give myself um, this kind of round section at the top. And this one's kind of oval, and then it just kind of dips, and I'm seeing this kind of waviness to um, the bottom section of it. And again, this bottom waviness is going to be the tips of um, petals that we're going to see. There's also a little tiny evidence of the center of one kind of right in through here. So I'm just going to put just an itty bitty bit, a little section in through there. And that looks pretty good to me. Oh, maybe also right in through here, bringing um, the, I want the, the evidence of the edge of these petals in like this, which I'm now seeing, I should be a little bit darker right, right behind this guy right here too. So something like this, I'm just pulling a little bit more darkness in that red flower. This is probably part of the dog's body actually, right in this section right in through here is what I'm thinking. It's looking like now that I'm looking at the photo more. Um, so that looks pretty good. And if you felt that there was any dark, any additional little dips that you um, felt would be needed darkness behind these guys up and through here, you can certainly do that. But I'm thinking that that's pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And I'm going to build my way to the lightness. But I think I can um, kind of, well, I'll, I... I kind of want to finish the, the leaf area, so I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of yellow because I know if I put yellow on top of this, it's going to look uh, on the greener side when it dries, so I'm using that to my advantage because that's actually a pretty uh, similar color to what it looks like in the, in the photo, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to also pick up a tiny bit of brown um, to separate any area as it's meeting that, um, the petal of the neighboring um, flower. So yellow and brown is gonna help me finish these little guys. I think I could just rub this on here and give the illusion of that. And then over here, again, just a little bit of yellow. This is gonna be this, this is gonna be a leaf right in through here. And then I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of brown. And this these will look way better um, 
when they dry and when they're next to the um, the flowers that I'm going to build right now. <laughs> so that looks pretty good. So once I've got that done and then down and through here, I'm not concerned about this because it's going to be so hidden and disguised once we've got the little dog on there it's not going to mean anything so now that i've got that i'm going to wash and dry my brush and i'm going to build my way i'm going to touch a, use a tiny bit of red on my brush first and the red is going to go um right next to well this particular one has it at the bottom so every time i go into one of these colors i'm going to um oh, think of it as a gradient and let it kind of fade up into what's going to be the next um, color. So this is going to be a little, just a little bit of red. I'm not going far with it. I'm just going to kind of let it gently kind of fade up a little bit. I see a touch in here as well. Uh, and of course, I'm going to be using some orange in a bit too. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just using red to start and then I'll be using the other colors in a little bit. So this one I'm going to put right at the edge like that. And then I'm going to also use the red a little bit away from that center. So just a tiny bit of red is going a little bit away from that center, something like this. And I'm gonna use the red to pull up in between my petals. So I'm gonna use a little bit of red to give me a little bit of definition between these petals. So again, yours doesn't have to be exactly as mine. Yours can be much different than mine, but I'm attempting to do um, pretty uh, similar formation as I'm seeing in the um, in the photo it appears like there's real yellow right here on the tips and there's almost like a little um, separation so again I'm just kind of going with what I see with the um, with the color pattern so I'm seeing some dark wrist dark dark wrist darkness in through here so that's what I'm doing and again I'm just using red to start and then I will um, use my orange to work my way into the lighter tone. So just red. This is going to be a little red in through here. And then just kind of working my way up. I've got red right in through here to that looks pretty good. And again, I'm, I'm using um, kind of a larger brush to do this. But if you wanted to use a smaller brush, that would that would work out just as well. Just going to put this red right around this edge right in through here. And these these flowers look like they're kind of different from one another just because of the way that they're positioned um, in the in the bouquet I guess but again I'm just following kind of color patterns that I'm seeing I feel like this needs to be this is gonna go pretty dark up and through here there we go that looks pretty good and then uh, this one's got this one needs a little more red in through here that looks good and then maybe just a touch this, this part's going to get a lot of orange up and through here, but right now I'm just kind of rubbing a little bit of my red in through here so I can have some deep tones, but um, there's definitely going to be more orange up in through here. So that looks pretty good, and I didn't really need too much of this to um, separate these upper petals. It was more these bottom petals that looked like they needed it more than the top petals, but let me just kind of make sure that this is blend it up just a little bit more there we go and same thing over on this side I didn't really need that red so now I'm gonna pick up some orange and I'm going to um, travel into the next kind of section with my orange so you'll find that as you're doing this the orange can be laid right on top of the red and it's just gonna give you another um, another value of that of that red so I'm just laying that orange right on top and I'm going to get the yellow to pop in a minute but right now just using and and the orange I'll get that to pop a little bit more as well so just using this orange right now to put it in these areas that I feel it really is dominant and it looks like I'm going to need some additional kind of tones in through there as well but we're just gonna we're gonna roll with this as is right now and again, it doesn't have to be exactly as the photo. Just, you know, once you learn the, the process of being able to see certain um, aspects and translate them onto your canvas, I think that's the trickiest part is just 
how, being able to see what you need to be able to see in order to convey it onto um, onto the canvas. And, and once you once you gain those skills, once you're able to see like an artist or be able to see the things that you um, need to see in order to get it to translate, the whole process becomes easier. So if you're if you're just beginning and you're getting discouraged at all because what you think that you're seeing you're just having a difficult time kind of translating it into um, your painting it's probably because you're you're not seeing you might not ha know how to see um, the things that you need to see yet so that's just a a process that sometimes will take time to to learn how to do to learn how to see or be able to detect where those shadows need to go, where those highlights need to go. That looks pretty cool. Um, so now what I'm going to do, just make sure I've got this as much as I want. And of course, this could be a layering process. You could add more, subtract more. So I'm going to uh, actually wash and dry my brush because I know that I want some of these yellow tips to be really yellow. And um, I think if I put just the yellow on top, what's going to happen is they're just going to turn green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick layer with just white on my brush to the areas that I really know are going to have um, or want a lot of brightness to them. So I've got these um, petals in through here. So I'm taking my white and I'm um, putting it in a thin layer on the areas that I know I, I want to be really yellow. So I'm taking this and you can even cross it over that orange a little bit if you wanted to. That's gonna, um, that's totally fine. And I'm just kind of rubbing it and just kind of pulling it down where I want those really bright areas to be. So when I go to put the yellow on top of this, you're gonna see how bright this, this can and um, can translate as. So if you're going again through this and, and you want it to, it's not being as bright as you want it to be. This is all I'm doing for a trick here is I'm, I'm putting a little bit of white on those areas that I want to be super vibrant. And you can certainly blend it down if you wanted to, but I'm gonna, I want for uh, this particular painting, there's a lot of um, deeper tones or this, this particular, these particular flowers, there's a lot of deep tones within it. So that's why I started um, in the way that I did. So again, I'm putting my, my bright areas and you'll see as soon as I pop on that, that yellow, <laughs> how, what the, what the purpose of these real bright marks was in through here. I'm just going to kind of, um, use a real fun painterly brush stroke and through here going to just pop on. But again, I I'm stressing that I'm using a thin amount or a little bit of um, paint so this way it dry not only does it dry quickly but um, it allows me the ability to just kind of um, do this in a in kind of a, a faster manner and if you run into wet paint like I did just blend it into that into that um, the inside edge of that petal and that will that will work out and again I'm going to do that to these guys up and through here so again I just keep loading my brush with white paint and I'm putting it in my areas that I want to really pop and really to have a bunch of um, yellow bright yellow to them so when doing this we could have there's several different methods that you could have used you could have um, segregated out these areas and just left them white with a white background and we could have built it that way but for me I, I just have a tendency of I love to layer I just think that it provides um, in my opinion one of the best ways to get a nice natural um, appearance to it with it reminds me of skin it reminds me of things that you know mother nature has millions of colors that she works with and when I'm doing these um, elements that take mother nature's finest work and um i'm trying to emulate it in in a painting i it's it's difficult to just say okay let's just go with this one color so when i layer it that allows me to take on multiple different colors without having to sit here and pre-mix all these different tones and shades and i get to 
you know, during the layering process, because I'm, I'm working with a transparent paint, which is acrylic paint, it will take on all of those different tones and, and values from the stuff that I did underneath. So it provides me with that, that way to build it. So I'm coming back over here and here we go. We're going to pop on the bright yellow. Are you ready for the magic? <laughs> so, so this is pretty dry. So really I, I can just take this now and add these yellow, these yellow pops onto here. So it, it, it will make it really nice and bright. This goes right on top of those lighter areas. And if you felt you wanted more orange, I can pick up more orange and just kind of intermingle that with it. That, that'll make those oranges pop a little bit more. So wherever you want to take this, however bright you want this to be, that'll be totally up to you. Um, however, however much orange you want to pull into it, or um, if you if you love that yellow and you want more, have at it. Just you know, you could even go in with another layer of the white and allow for um, it to be even brighter. So that just have fun with that. I need to wash my brush because I just picked up a whole bunch of orange, and when I go over here, I want my yellow to pop. <laughs> so I'm going to start with my with my yellow, and again, just go right over these white areas and it just it's like magic <laughs> it's, it's painting magic and of course as i do this i know my yellow if i don't pick up white is is transparent so i am very free to just kind of paint over you know the stuff that i had done I, i'm probably going to add a little bit more orange to these guys but um i'm just taking that white and just popping it right on top of those uh, or taking the yellow and popping it right on top of those white areas and it, it just makes it so bright so beautiful and then once I've got this done what I'll do is I'll say okay do I want a little more orange do I want a little more of anything else so I can pick up a little bit more orange if I wanted to and just kind of pop it on there if I felt that I wanted um a more transition or if I wanted anything if I wanted some little seeds in there I can do that if I feel I need more darkness anywhere this is the this is the opportunity or the time to just go through and fiddle so I feel like maybe this could use a little bit more orange up and through this section so I'll just pop a little bit more orange on and then I oh I missed this little guy here so we'll get that with a little bit of yellow um so you just continue to to enjoy the process and make it into your own special sunflowers and then once you've got this done we're going to use um i think i want to use my small brush for the next step so make any little fiddling adjustments that you feel are necessary for this if you feel that you want to do anything in through here you could always pick up a little bit of yellow and white just to make this a little bit more visible now that I don't like that I'm going back uh yellow with black <laughs> make it a little bit more green there we go make it look like a little leaf and then just play with it make it uh do anything else that you feel is necessary we're going to be using um again our small brush for the next step so you can just get it out and get ready All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the facial features. I'm gonna be using my number three round brush. The colors I'm gonna use are definitely black, gray, white, and maybe a little brown and burnt sienna. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these adorable little features in place and then we'll do a little soft detail around them and then we'll go back and do the detail on the inside of them. So I'm gonna start with some black paint on my brush and I'm gonna use a little bit of water on my brush as well so I can have a thin consistency for uh, the paint to, to mark it off. So I've already kind of set the idea of where these features are gonna be, but after further investigation on the photo, the eyes, I want to make sure that they're placed well for this particular photo so it looks like this particular dog. If you just want a generic terrier, you could certainly place them in just a similar position. But if you're going for a, I want to paint this particular dog or this particular human, you really want to make sure that you get those proportions and the placement good on them. So this particular dog, 
the eyes are, they fall just below the bottom part of the ear line and they are kind of tipped a little bit again because the head is is tipped so this right one is going to come a little bit inside this ear so somewhere in through here is where i'm going to give myself a circular type of shape these eyes on this particular dog are very circular a lot of times um, depending on the animal that you're doing or the person that you're doing they might be oval they might look like the shape of almonds they might have all different kinds of shapes but this particular dog is very round eyed so as i'm doing this i'm doing very loose edges to my circular shape so i can get it to um, blend into the fur around the eyes and then i'm just going to kind of paint that in so my next eye is going to go again kind of at an angle this one's going to be a little bit to the left of where i had originally thought it was going to go so i'm going a little bit right in through here and this dog is looking pretty straight at us so you'll want to make these pretty similar in size and for me putting my hand just in a continual motion my hand usually makes a better circle than my brain does <laughs> so as i go through making circles and stuff sometimes I can just go with what my hand tells me to do instead of my brain. <laughs> so that look, that's looking pretty good. And again, you can kind of measure to see if you made them pretty symmetrical from one side to the next. So I'm just gonna make sure my, my paint is pretty thin in that center area so it'll dry quickly for me. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do my nose. So my nose on this guy, or girl, I'm not quite sure if it's a boy or a girl, is almost, it's a little bit more narrow than the distance between the eyes. So if you've got your eyes placed in a similar spot to me, and then the top of the nose is about halfway between the eyes and the bottom of the chin. So somewhere in through here is about the top of the nose. And it's kind of a um, curved type shape at the top. And then it's almost like a, um, comes almost to, not necessarily a point, but a little bit more narrow down at the bottom as it's going towards that mouth. And then I can just kind of paint this in with a thin layer of black, again, just so it dries pretty quickly. And again, those edges just make them messy. So not super clean edges, and that'll make it, as you uh, go to paint in the details around the nose, it makes it easier. So then my mouth is adorable <laughs> it's right below i mean it's almost touching the 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 nose so just right below it somewhere in through here and it kind of comes across like this and and kind of has these cute little pieces of fur that like tip down <laughs> and it's got the bottom lip is right in through here or the bottom to the mouth so something like this i'm just going to paint it in black I am going to um, just kind of darken this little fur right in through here. So just with the remnants on my brush. And I'm also gonna darken um, these edges. Let me just make sure that that's as big as I want. So it, the, the face almost kind of like, the jaw is in further than the cheeks. So I'm gonna take this, because there's a lot of like dark fur in through here. So while I have it on my brush and I'm in this area, I'm just gonna take um, the remnants on my brush and just kind of put some a little bit more darkness down in through here. So that'll sink that um, jaw area back a little bit further. Super cute. So now I'm gonna go back up to the eyes. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm going to take, so I use watered down black up there so it, is it took on some of my background color. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more black in order to give myself a nice defined edge at the um, bottom of my eye. So something like this without the water on my brush. So this is gonna be just straight black here. And it doesn't even have to be exactly at the bottom of your marker, just something down in through here. Give yourself a nice darkness down at the bottom. Now I'm gonna pick up, I wipe, wipe my brush off on my paper towel, I'm picking up a little bit of my gray and I'm gonna do almost like a little haze at the top of the eye. I was a little bit um, too thick so I just washed my brush and put a little bit of water on it 
and then I just can rub that down. So this is going to give you that um, kind of glossy look to the eye. If you are doing an animal that you want to show the color in the eye, you could also, this is where I was thinking I was going to use some burnt sienna, you could put a little bit of burnt sienna in that eye, but the photo that I'm using, I, I'm having a really tough time telling what color the eyes are, so I'm just going to put a tiny bit of burnt sienna there and just call it. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush, and I'm going to put a little bit of white paint on my brush. And there's... Uh, these cute little sparkle dots and they really look pretty symmetrical towards the top of the eye. Just a little tiny circle like that and then same thing over on this eye. Just a little tiny circle like that. And then, oh, so cute. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll put more information. Well, actually, why don't I do that right now? I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to put a little bit of brown paint on my brush, and I'm going to get these eye socket areas to go a little bit darker while I'm here, just kind of putting a little bit more brown in through there and around um, the eye itself. So this is just brown right now. I'm going to do more work around these eyes but with a bigger brush, but just while we're here and we've got the the thought process in my brain, let's do it. So this is just brown, putting a little bit of darkness, a little bit more darkness around these eyes, maybe a little bit more up into here. And these dark areas are, you know, more information that's gonna sell the story of this is this particular dog. I'm really shaping the um, exterior to resemble what I'm seeing in the photo. There's also a little light area it looks like right underneath that eye so I picked up a tiny bit of my gray just past my black I'm going to just put a little tiny um, halo or a little tiny light area just right outside that black and that brown that I had done first helps to accentuate this for me and this is again just that gray that we used for that background so just a little tiny bit right in through here that looks good so I'm going to move to my nose and I'm going to, again, just pick up a straight black, no water in it, give myself a couple of nostrils. So you might not even be able to detect these because of um, it, depending on how much the camera is picking up. Uh, just some little, little nostrils in through here, like this and like this. Now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of my gray, give myself a little highlight on the top of that nose. And you can just kind of blend it back. I'm going to put a little tiny highlight right at the bottom of the nostrils. So looks like it's right in through here and somewhere over on this side like that. And you could, if you felt that um, you wanted more to this, you could pick up like a little bit of gray and brown and just kind of lighten up a little bit of the center of that nose just to get it to protrude just a little bit more if it's looking too flat for you and or you can pick up a little bit more black and just push a little bit more black edges into it and that'll kind of push give it a little bit more uh, dimension again the photo I'm using doesn't have a lot of these details um, just enough to say it is what it is and then the mouth I, I don't see much at all, so I'm just going to take more black, give myself some little um, fringe at the top of that lip, something like that, and I'm going to pick up gray. I'm going to go wild and crazy, and I'm going to put a lip on it, even though I don't see it in the photo. Just a little tiny lip into it. Yes, yes, he needed that. <laughs> my God, he's so cute. So I'm going to use my medium brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the second step to the bottom part of the dog. So this will be the body and the paws. I am gonna have a future step where I come through with final details and just the little skinny pieces of fur to make sure everything is exactly where I want it, but this is gonna get most of the job done. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, burnt sienna, white, and my gold color and if I use anything else I'll let you know oh I'm probably going to use yellow as well 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach it dark to light. So I'm going to have shadows underneath my paws on the, um, on the wood barrel. I need to make sure that my shadow in through here is fully defined. I've got a little bit more um, work I want to do in the shadowy areas around the dog. There's also some pieces of black fur, some long pieces of black fur that are kind of intertwined and intermingled with the main body. So I'm going to put a couple of streaks of that in through there. And then I'm going to work my way towards the light. There's by this black fur in through here, there's also this kind of mocha type of color that we're going to pre-mix um, to add that additional tone to the dog. So again, I'm going to use my number 10 round, my medium round to paint, but I'm going to use my small number three to pre-mix that. Um, I don't know what other color to call it. It's like a it looks like almost hot chocolate to me or, or coffee or something. So I've got it on my palette. This, this color that I have here, maybe I'll just call it light brown. So we're going to call it light brown so there's no confusion there. How I achieved this is burnt sienna, black, and a little bit of white. So it's mostly burnt sienna, but the black and the white is going to give it this um, I need a little bit more than that, a little bit more black and white. So I'm desaturating my burnt sienna. So when you say desaturation, it means you're in essence kind of adding gray to it. That's pretty good, but I think I need a little bit more gray to it, which I guess I could have just taken my gray and added it to my burnt sienna now that I'm second thinking this, but this is pretty good in through here. So it's a desaturated burnt sienna. So it's a burnt sienna kind of turned a little grayer so that works well for me so but I'm gonna call it light brown so as I'm calling out my colors as I'm using them that's gonna be what I call light brown so that's good so now I'm gonna take my large brush I'm, I think I said all the colors I'm gonna use but I'll call them out as I use them so I'm gonna take my uh, medium uh, round brush I'm gonna put a little bit of water plus black on my brush so I can have a watered down version of black and I'm going to make sure that I've closed off all of my edges. This is where I can start to pull out some little pieces of additional fur, give my fur some texture. I also uh, am going to start some little shadowy areas above this paw. So I just put a little bit of, of darkness up in through there, making sure that my edges are closed off wherever that paw meets whatever it's meeting. So that looks pretty good in through there. I'm going to put little darkness underneath my paw in through here. So it looks like it's casting a little bit of a shadow on that, um, on that barrel. You can also pull up little um, marks in between the toes, but I, again, I'm not seeing the toes separated fully um, a lot. So I'm just going to put these little darker areas up a couple of little areas that I see them, um, but that works out pretty well in through there. That creates my shadow on the uh, barrel as well as my darkness between those toes. So I'm going to do the same thing over on this foot in through here. So this one looks like it is um, kind of up on here a little bit. So that's going to be the shadow and you could blend that shadow out if you wanted to. Um, it looks like it's a little uh, gradated in the in the photo, but I'm just kind of putting it on there. <laughs> you could certainly grade that out if you wanted to. And then it looks like there's a little bit of darkness on the front of this paw. So I'm just bringing some dark tones up in through here like this. That looks pretty good. And I'm thinking this paw, let's see. Yeah, that's in a good spot. I was wondering if it should be moved over, but I think that that's pretty good. Um, and then there's a little, I'm putting a little bit of darkness in the fur right above it like that. And then there's a little bit of darkness um, underneath these flowers on the side of the fur in through here. So again, I'm just really looking for areas that need to be um, finessed as they're meeting those flowers. You can add little pieces of fur kind of um, to intermingle with your flowers uh, along these edges. That's going to be up to you. I feel like this should be darker under here. And just these little um, 
these little finessing brush strokes to allow for these edges to be a little bit more um, finished that will make it look a little bit um, like, like it's fully done. Um, I also feel I need to add some shadow on this side of the um, barrel. So I'm using the remnants on my brush to darken this side of the barrel and just kind of make that edge a little bit. I think the flowers are casting a shadow on the barrel that I, that I did not recognize earlier. So that works there. And then underneath the chin, I definitely need some black. So I just picked up more black and I'm going in now, instead of just having a clean line across here, this is where I'm gonna kind of um, give myself a little bit more of an uneven line as it's meeting the face. I will have this even better when I go to do the fur on the face, but right now I can start that process of making that little transition period or place um, look a little bit more realistic. So that looks good. I'm gonna put a couple of those um, skinny black pieces where I see them. I see them kind of coming and splitting like the body from the paw in through here. So I'm just taking a little bit of black paint, watered down again, and just kind of adding these darker areas where I feel as if they're being um, shown to me <laughs> in, the, in the photo. So this one kind of comes down in through here. And this really in the photo makes it look like um, the paws kind of, or the legs start to pop out once we, um, once we kind of emulate these darker pieces of fur underneath this chin. And again, right now I'm just using black. I am, um, I think I just picked up a little bit of gray by accident, but I'm, st I'm attempting to use just black um, in through here. But if you still have some of the um, other colors from the, the first go around, that's, that's awesome. That's just gonna allow for this to have lots of layers to it. So that looks good. I need a little bit more of this black down at the bottom right in through here. So just a itty bitty bit in through here to give myself um, the full texture that I need. So something like this. And then once I've got my darkest of my dark with my black areas accomplished, now I'm gonna pick up that custom color, the mocha light brown. <laughs> light brown, that's what I said I was gonna call it. So I picked up that some of that light brown. I'm seeing some of it kind of underneath this chin and I'm not using a real firm brush stroke. I'm really using the tip of my brush to kind of just see where I'm seeing this color in, in the photo and I'm layering this fur the way that I feel that it's layered on, on the animal. So you can certainly you know, manipulate yours a little bit more than I'm doing to mine, but I'm, I'm utilizing also those other tones that I had underneath the fur. And through here, I feel that the fur is kind of curved a little bit, so I'm always gonna be using a brush stroke that is emulating the direction of the fur that I'm seeing in the, in the photo. So I don't, um, that, so I can keep those, those characteristics of that fur. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white with that um, with that light brown right now because there are some areas like over in through here that are a bit lighter with that tone. Um, even in through here, there's a little light section uh, that's got just little bits. And I'm just using the tip of my brush to kind of get these, these colors on here. There's a little bit of this color over in through here. And again, know that I am gonna do another step to this. So if you don't get it perfect on this step, it's all right, we still got it. We still got another one to come. So once I've got that, those colors on there, I'm gonna start adding the more yellow tones or um, the burnt sienna yellowy tone. So I'm gonna pick up both burnt sienna and yellow on my brush at the same time. I'm seeing a lot of those tones kind of um, around like the edges as well as on these um, paws and again i i do have i'm going to put a little bit more um, of that blonde color on in a little bit the the color that we created for the base coat but right now just kind of um, trying to see where i see these uh these rusty type of tones uh, definitely over here and it's gonna again take on whatever the tone is underneath it So if I put it on top of these paws, which we started with burnt sienna, it'll look one way 
but if I put it on top of this area, the same color combination on my brush, it's going to look different because it's going to have that lighter version underneath. So I'm going to, um, right now I'm just kind of popping back and forth between my yellow and my burnt sienna just to get these, these tones in here. And then once I've got this, I'll just add, um, I'm going to add the little bits of the yellowish tones or the blonde tones, and then we'll call it on this step. So again, burnt sienna and yellow is where I'm headed in through here. And if you come to an area where you feel needs to be even darker, you could certainly, I'm going to pick up brown on my brush. Like I feel that the side of this paw should be a little bit darker. So I just picked up a little bit of brown. That'll help you deepen any of those tones if you feel that that's necessary. A little bit over in through here. And then I definitely have a little bit of this burnt sienna tone right up in through here. So just gonna add a touch up in through there. Little tiny bit kind of coming down in through here. A Little bit up in through here. And again, this is, a, it's like a calico cat. This, this dog has so many different tones to its fur, which is great. You know, it, it allows you to get this experience in painting a multi-tone dog. <laughs> so, or an in, in, animal with a multi-tone fur texture layer kind of thing. So that looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to pick up my golden color and this is going to be my, my lightest area. So I've got some in through here, maybe a little bit on the tip of this paw. And again, don't, don't worry, there's that extra step there. There'll be another step coming to finalize this and to make all of this fur really come to life with those little tiny pieces on the top. This one's got some of this all over in through here. And like I see that there's an area right here that could use a little bit more yellow. So I'm gonna go in for my golden tone plus a little bit of yellow on my brush. So you can change or tweak those tones too as you're, as you're adding um, these layers on here. I've got some streaks of this golden color in through here. And again, I will add some more lightness to it. Uh, this is to the right of the nose. This is a pretty, there's a pretty light kind of swath of <laughs> fur right in through here. So we're just gonna kind of allow for that to happen. And then coming over here, there's a couple of little patches of this fun, lighter fur kind of coming down in through here and then over in through here. And again, I'm just kind of trying to emulate the direction of the fur that I'm seeing. There's a couple of these light pieces over in through here. And just know it's, you know, think of this as impressionistic. You don't have to do it, it you know, one for one exactly as I'm doing it. I, again, am um, emulating a photo. So that steers me um, when it comes to all of these decisions that I'm making. But when you're doing your own, if you want it to you know, look a, a different way, that's gonna be totally up to you. And then once you've got this done, I'm just kind of add a little bit more up to the, up on the top of this paw and through here. Once you've got this done, we're gonna use uh, this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it. Mm, we got a little fluffy stuff on the end of this toe. <laughs> so you can just, oh no, now I'm, now I'm not gonna be able to stop. Once you've got this done, I'm going to just say it a hundred times until I'm done. <laughs> Once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this um, medium brush and <laughs> get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the second step to the fur on the head. So the ears and the whole face. I'm gonna use my uh, medium round brush again. And the colors I'm gonna use are um, white, yellow, burnt sienna, brown, and probably some black and maybe some gray. I'm not gonna be using that custom light brown because I don't see any of that up here at the moment. <laughs> If I, as I'm painting, if I'm like, oh, I want some of that, then I'll put it, but I don't, I don't think I'm gonna. So I'm gonna, again, work from the dark to the light, uh, just enhancing the areas that need more of um, the dark tones and then bringing the lighter tones more into the, into the foreground. So again, the, the head is colored, in my opinion, kind of differently than the body. That light brown color that we created kind of makes the bottom color look a little bit 
different, um, which is the way that it looks in the photo. There's just so many colors on this talk. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start again in my dark areas. There's a lot of darkness down um, around the features. So around the mouth and the nose, around these eyes, there's a lot of darkness. Inside the ears, there's some darkness, and then we'll build our way to the light. And there's, of course, similarly to the bottom or the chest fur, there's a couple of straggly black pieces of fur that are kind of like hanging into the face, I think, or I think they're hanging in, not going up, but we'll, we'll play it as we go. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with a tiny bit of my watered down black on my brush so I can um, get in place Hold on, I need a paper towel too. So I can get the um, dark areas in place, or the darkest of the dark areas in place, and then I will work my way towards um, those lighter areas. So again, I see I have my darkness over here kind of already started, but I feel as if there needs to be a couple more um, pieces kind of coming up towards that ear a little bit. So I'm gonna pull those in. I've got some fun um, hairs coming in through here there's a there's another one in through here again i know that these pieces of fur might be on top of uh the other ones but this the fur on this um little this little cute dog is so over uh so intermingled the the layers of it are in, intermingled with each other so it um it's kind of okay if you do it Usually I work from the inside of the fur to the outside, but again, this one is kind of um, breaking rules as it goes. <laughs> I'm picking up some burnt sienna and my black right now to, um, I've got some dark stuff happening around this nose. So this is burnt sienna and, and black, just kind of um, getting some of those dark tones right around that nose. And I'm just watching where things, where these fun little dark streaks are kind of jutting out. Um, there's also a bunch of this darkness right along um, the the mouth in through here picking up a little bit more black because I feel I need to get these um, kind of darker little spots in here so it's a little bit more black on my brush to just make sure that I have those deep tones again when you're when you're doing stuff like this the um, the contrast that you build with these deep dark layers or uh, information is what's going to give it a lot of um, a lot of that dimensional element. So this is pretty good in through here, and then this is where I can again just kind of work that little edge down in through there. This probably needs to be a little bit further out in through here because it goes past the eye. That's good. I'm going to pick up some. Um, do I need any more? I'm going to go. Uh, I'm picking up some brown on my dirty brush to go inside these ears. So brown on my dirty brush to go inside the ears like that. Leave a little bit of around the edge, just kind of really lightly or uh, kind of scrubbing it on there. So it takes, so again, it keeps some of those burnt sienna tones in it, but not um, coloring it all the way. That looks pretty good. Um, I also want to put more burnt sienna and yellow on my brush. I'm going to go around these eyes. I feel like there's definitely more to be had around these eyes. So this is burnt sienna and yellow and there's a bunch of little rusty tones around these eyes and kind of coming out in through here. So this is burnt sienna and yellow on my brush right now getting these tones to uh, interplay around the eyes. And I might need to go a little bit darker around these eyes. Again, I'm going with the directional brush stroke that I'm seeing uh, as for the direction of the fur within the, within, the, um, within the photo. So it seems to be going, both eyes are going that way, which is pretty unusual. But we're just we're just rolling with it. That's what the photo's telling me to do. So that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna pull some down around uh, this eye in through here. Maybe some little bits down in through there. Some little bits down in through this fur into here. That looks pretty good. Uh, I do see a couple of real dark tones over here. So I'm gonna pick up some brown right now on my dirty brush. I've got some. Um, some streaks of some darker 
fur kind of coming out the corner of the eye. There's some lighter fur on top of it, but I definitely need to get some of these darker tones in here. Right next to that piece of hair, there's some darkness. Boy, this is a, this is a fun little fun little creature to paint because of all these little tones in the in the fur. But again, this is how we learn when we're going through these um, challenges. <laughs> is what I would refer to this type of painting as because it's it's complex with all these different tones and colors. Um, this is how we learn. This is how we understand how to see things, how we understand how to layer things, how we understand what um, is going to create certain effects. There's a lot of um, contrast in the, oops, I just picked up some white by accident. I don't want that yet. Uh, there's a lot of contrast in these tones right along this edge of the head. So I'm going to put some streaks of brown in through here and it kind of comes right up into here a little bit. So like that, again, again, I'm going to do that. Where else do I see it? I see, ooh, down in through here, there's some little darkness in through there. And then on the side of this face, uh, right about down to the nose. So something like this. And again, I'm using the tones from the, the first layer also. So I'm not necessarily... Um, covering up all of those tones. There's some lighter fur that comes out over here. There's some um, lighter fur that comes out that ear. We'll do that in a little bit. I'm going to just kind of pull this. I think that that's looking pretty good. We've got lots of darkness. I'm going to pick up, um, I'm wiping my brush off. I'm picking up a little bit more yellow because I feel as if there's some pretty yellow tones underneath um, some of this fur. So I'm popping some yellow on right now. I w it'll dull down in a minute when I start adding other stuff on top of it, but there's quite a bit of um, yellow tones that I'm seeing kind of intermingled with the, some of this burnt sienna. So I'm just kind of adding a little bit more there. Down underneath here too, I feel I need a little bit more burnt sienna and yellow. So this I can kind of um, start to pull down the colorful streaks of fur. This is just burnt sienna and yellow, kind of giving me this effect underneath the mouth. And again, it'll tone down as it, as it dries. And if it doesn't tone down enough, we can, we can make it do that. <laughs> again, burnt sienna and yellow, giving myself some, some fun little pieces around the mouth. So burnt sienna and yellow are my colors right now, just so I can get these little pieces around the mouth. And then um, I'm gonna, that looks pretty good. A little bit more, I feel I need a little bit more burnt sienna around this nose and through here. And of course, I'm using just um, kind of out of the bottle colors for this particular um, fur pattern. You could certainly be pre-mixing exact tones, um, but I feel as though these are working pretty well with the, with the actual color of the um of the animal so i'm i'm having pretty good success with um using these tones but if you're emulating a different kind of animal or with a different um tone in their their fur you can certainly customize your colors this is just yellow uh adding this on as another tone right in through here because again that's what i'm seeing in the photo so that looks pretty good maybe a little bit more yellow under this eye and then uh, that's pretty good. So I'm going to go up to those ears. I'm going to use some of my blonde color plus a touch of white right now um, to lighten up the tops or the edges of these ears. So this is blonde plus a little bit of white um, to get these edges to go a little bit lighter in through there, up in through here as well. You could certainly um, go, you know, more of a reddish tone or a light tone, whatever works for you. I'm thinking that this is pretty good for what I'm seeing in the photo and maybe just a little bit down this side and through here. And it looks like it just kind of fades into the center of that ear, something like that. And same thing over on that other side. Let's bring it down just a little bit in through here. And again, I have one final, I'll be doing another step that'll kind of emphasize all of this stuff, but 
this is looking pretty good. And then I'm going to add the light stuff on the face. So again, I'm going to just pick up some of the blonde color plus a little bit of white. There's definitely um, a lot in through here. And you could also use a different brush too. I'm opting to use this brush because I kind of wanted um, the individual type of pieces, which I can start, I can get that with my bristle brush too. So I might even, as I, um, you know, finalize this, I might opt to use my, my bristle brush a little bit in order to get more individual type of pieces. Uh, but I kind of wanted to play with my, my um, round brush today. So that's what I'm doing. So again, I've just got the blonde plus white on my brush right now trying to get the um, the lighter areas to start. Uh, this is definitely right along the eyes. This goes right up above those eyes and just kind of pops down in through here. And then again, I'm not quite sure what full on direction this fur is taken because the photo is a little out of focus. Um, so I'm just uh, kind of using my best judgment as to what is actually happening with this this fur um, and then that, that connects in through there this is a little bit lighter in through here but again the final step that i do will um, bring all these pieces together if i haven't brought them together in this step so again i'm using any combination of your blonde and your um and your white as i come over to this right side it looks like it's a little bit darker over here uh, but there's still kind of a light section in through here and it kind of goes behind <laughs> this is so fun not only is it lots of colors it's also lots of directions for the fur which makes it again even more challenging and fun and we get to learn and then it's got a similar kind of um profile of its little fur in through here and then it's got these nice longer pieces kind of jutting out from um, this area of the eye and coming we got this one kind of coming right down into this fe uh, this feather <laughs> that um flower that'd be a flower not a feather <laughs> and then just kind of bringing this down in through here again you could do more individual pieces if you wanted to um, by either using a smaller brush a different kind of brush like a bristle brush will give you um, those real almost individual looking pieces this top looks to be a little bit whiter um, so I'll do that in a second I've got some uh, fur coming off the edge of this ear so again this is just my um, my uh, blonde plus a little bit of white kind of coming off this ear in through here and a little bit up in through here and again I'm going to do another step though after this that will that will finalize all of this all of these fun pieces but right now just trying to get them in place with this lots of lots of different directions <laughs> it's making me it's making me smile enjoying the process um of even myself you know i've painted a million times before i painted a lot of dogs too and just you know when you get to ones like this where it's like wow look at all this variation in you know in the fur in the in the directions in the you know the idea of, of all of where where this fun hair is going to and coming from um when it gets crossing over those ears just kind of um, if you can allow for the intermingling of the ear fur and the hair, the head fur, that will make it look a little bit more natural. I've got these kind of coming over in through here, I think. <laughs> and then on that top of that head, I'm going to go white with my, um, with my blonde. This is really kind of textured and I'm going to make it lighter on the next step um, with my final details. But again, just kind of wanting to get that on there and then just pulling it in the direction i think i'm actually going to put more white on my brush more white in through here and then just kind of pulling this out i think i'm going to pick up gray white and gray i don't know if i said i was going to use gray but white and gray um, just to kind of intermingle these guys in through here get it to kind of resemble a little bit closer to what i'm seeing and then i'm thinking that that's a pretty good pretty good to spot for me to, to stop on this step. I don't know what that little piece is, but I see it. So 
I'm just gonna put it, oh, we need just a little bit more around these eyes too, hold on. We just kinda get these little um, expression pieces in through here. <laughs> so cute. All right, that, that, that makes me happy. We've got that light spot, a little bit more light spot in through here. All right, so I'm going to be using, um, what am I gonna use for the next step? I'm picking up some, um, some more gold color, sorry, or the blonde color. Um, I'm gonna use, what am I gonna use for the next step? I feel like I, I want to do um, my, believe it or not, my large bristle brush for the next step. So that's what I'm gonna be using. So once you've got this done, you can put this brush away, take out your large bristle brush, and if you can get this done, Get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is I'm gonna call it the final step to the fur. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna probably use all of my colors except for orange and red. So probably brown, yellow, white, gray, light brown, burnt sienna, blonde, and black. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. I'm, I was thinking about using my small brush to do individual pieces and to really just kind of do one for one, but I just, I feel like I just want to have fun and not go one for one. I just want to kind of, ooh, I want a little light here and a little dark here. So I'm going to have, for me, I will have good success doing that with this brush. The trick here is just don't use a lot of paint on your brush at any one time. I'm gonna be using a lot of the time either just the corner of my brush or it on the skinny side. So not like this, but like this. And that'll allow me to, or even just kind of like the side of it. That'll give allow me to kind of pull and give these nice light uh, or streaky kind of areas that are gonna look like fur. So I, I definitely need some additional light areas. So I know I need some more lightness in through here. I need more lightness on the top of the head. I need more lightness in the ears and I need more lightness in the, the chest fur. So I'm doing kind of this final layer to pop on these, the, the final texture, if you will. I am gonna make one more custom color um, that I'm gonna create with my small uh, round brush. I'm going to call it, um, mm, I'm going to call it like a caramel type of a color. So it's right on my palette here. How I achieved this color is I used yellow, burnt sienna, and white. So I was using the yellow and the burnt sienna on my brush at the same time while I was painting these previous layers, but now I want the, the color that those two colors create to be more cohesive throughout the painting and to, and to kind of harmonize a little bit better and not be as, so separate. So that's where I'm coming up with this color here. So I'll be using that a lot on, on the dog. So I'm gonna actually start with that color, that caramel type color. So I have it on my brush. I'm gonna uh, use it in a lot of my highlight places because it's gonna have a little bit of white in it. So it's gonna um, allow me to get some good opacity. And you can see I can get some great texture with this brush as opposed to just using um, one uh, tip of my, of my round brush. So for me, I, I like my bristle brushes <laughs> because they work really well with the way that I paint. Um, so it, that's another thing that we, that we do and learn as, as we're painters, what works best for our particular painting style and how our hand works and how our brain works. And for me, I, you know, my bristle brushes are like my best friend <laughs> because I can, I can make my dots, I can make my, my streaks, I can control that paint and push it where I want, or I can have it lay, you know, just, touch it very gently and it won't go far, you know, so I, I can really use these brushes. They're very versatile in the way that I paint. Um, so I'm using this color again in my areas that I feel that was pretty good in those, those little pockets. I'm gonna pick up that custom color plus a little bit of burnt sienna, just cause I feel there's a couple of little darker areas in through here and up in through here, just kind of, and I can use this, the corner again to, 
get these colors to kind of um, overlap and intermingle with with one another and that's that's what fur is all about fur is definitely about um, you know how each piece just lays on top of the other and plays and you know contrasts with the with the other colors around it that looks pretty good maybe just a touch more down in through here and again I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm working my dark to my light I love this color so I'm going to go ahead and put it everywhere else that I want and so I'm going up to my ears and I feel that there's some of it in the ears so I'm just kind of going right on top of what I did and allowing it to be thicker in some spots and thinner in other spots and giving me that um, that layered look that I am so desiring. So again, this is kind of going right up towards that top and just kind of dabbling it into those ears as well. And now I'm starting to watch my chalk mark. If there's any that I need to get rid of, I can just kind of go over it with my brush or my pinky. <laughs> um, I want some of this. I'm, I'm like digging this color. So it's probably going to go a lot of places <laughs> and that and that's another thing you know as you're as you're doing these layering processes you know you, you one color is going to start to play off of the color that's underneath it so for me uh, you know that's a lot of my mo is i i i layer i layer because it it looks natural to me and you can see this side of the face already looks way more natural than that side because i've got this this common color that I'm now allowing to talk to all the colors um, in in the in the composition and it's making it look more realistic at, at, you know the second I add it on so I've got some coming out over here and this allows me to give these um, you know more playful kind of energetic pieces of fur with more movement to them as opposed to just that single piece that my other brush was creating. I've got some in through here, but again, I can't stress enough. I don't have much paint on my brush. I'm just using the little tip of my brush um, with these colors on it to just kind of um, lay them down in exactly where I want them to go. So I've, I've just got to be careful about the quantity of paint because if I have a ton of paint on my brush, it's going to um, be a detriment to me as I'm, as I'm trying to control where all of this is going. If I put too much paint it's gonna add too much paint and it's gonna it's gonna overpower my whole painting so I don't want to do that I just want to go a little bit at a time this one's got a little bit in through here and he's coming to life this final layer sometimes it's just that final layer that you need to to get those all to get everything to just work the way that you had planned a little bit right here Oh my God, he's so cute. You're going to even get some right underneath there. <laughs> Maybe with a little little burnt sienna, a little extra burnt sienna, a little extra fluffy down there. And I'm just going to make sure that I've got uh, the, that area covered up really well. Oh, he's adorable. All right, so now I'm going to go um, down into the the chest area to get finish my light areas. So I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to pick up that light brown, that like mocha fun color that we had, plus a touch of white. So mocha plus a little bit of white on my brush. There's a couple of really bright areas kind of coming in through here. Uh, these guys get a little bit more. Oh yeah, see, I'm telling you, it's it's all about the brush. It's all about the bristle brush. Um, it, it, I'm just getting the texture I wanted. The, that single brush that I was using um, was giving me, was placing my colors where I wanted them, but wasn't giving me the little singular um, individual pieces of fur that I feel are pretty important, especially to this composition where this little guy has so much happening. Um, and these little individual pieces of fur help to explain that story. So just a little bit more in through here, and you can add those little bright pops if you need to. Um, that looks pretty good for, for those lighter colors in through there. And then now I'm going to, I don't, I didn't see any of this kind of mocha kind of color over in up here, but if you felt like you needed to connect it at all, you could certainly just splatter it on or, you know, rub it on in any areas, maybe a little in the ears. If you felt you wanted a little more 
harmony with that color. So now I'm going to pick up, um, I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm going in for my lightest tones now. And then I'll come back if there's a couple of little black streaks that I need on top of that. So I'm going to go for my uh, blonde plus white on my brush. So blonde plus white. And again, a little bit on my brush. And I've got quite a bit on the side of this leg in through here. And I'm just watching where it plays. It goes right behind this paw in through here. And then there's a little bit on the tip of the paw, something like this. So this is my uh, blonde plus a little bit of white. Uh, there's a couple of little streaks in through here. So again, I'm just kind of watching where those light marks are. There's a big light mark. I just want to make sure I get it right. I think it's right about in through here. And again, you don't have to have it exactly. At, you know, I just, again, like to, um, if, I, if I'm doing fur and I, if I wanted to emulate that particular um, animal, I, I want it to look like it. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it at all costs to whatever it takes to get those little kind of pieces to, um, to work out. But again, I am having fun and I am enjoying this process. So if, I'm using some of that mocha color too, plus the tan. Um, so as I'm going through this, if I, if I don't get it perfect, I really am okay with that. Uh, but again, I like the challenge. I'm picking up a little bit more white because this one is screaming at me. It says, I want more white. <laughs> Just a little bit in through there and a little bit more in through here. And then I'm going to go, it's so cute. I'm going up top now. So white is on my brush with whatever the remnants of the other colors were. So, and I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel so I can have very little bit on my brush. And now I'm gonna just kind of pop in these lightest tones in through here. I see them kind of coming pretty close to the nose. I'm just using the tip of my brush to just pop on these lighter, um, these lighter tones. And this is pretty light in through here. So wherever I feel I need to go a little bit heavier, I just push my brush a little bit further, firmer, and that's gonna give a little bit more of that tone. And this has to just kind of talk to that a little bit. And same thing over here. We've got a little bit in through here. So I don't want to go as light on this side. So you could pick up a little bit of your blonde as well with your white color or with a, a touch of white. And that'll that'll help to uh, keep this side a little bit darker, but maybe not, um, you know, still light. And if you needed to change up the tone at all, if you needed more blonde or more yellow in it, feel free to adjust it. You could even use a little bit of that, um, the new color that we made, which, oh, the caramel color. Uh, so this looks pretty good. And even, you know, as you get into here, if you want more individual pieces, don't let me stop you from using a smaller brush. That's, you know, something that you can decide all on your own if you want to use a smaller brush or not. So again, this is my tan plus white on my brush. I need a little bit more lightness in through here. So I'm hardly touching my canvas right now just to get just an itty bitty bit in through there. That looks good. A little bit in through here. So that's not such a stark. It's got a little fun piece there. <laughs> a little couple fun pieces right in through here. And then I'm, I'm reserving myself because there's white at the top. So I'm kind of, I'm working my way to that so I don't overdo it. So I'm still blonde plus white on my brush right now. This is lighter over here. And that's a little bit grayer. I'm going to actually pick up some of my, um, my gray plus white for right here. So that way I've got um, gray tones in there. And then uh, gray plus white, I think is gonna work out pretty well up in through here to get these little guys and these little guys and these little guys. <laughs> so this is gray plus white to get these little edge pieces in through here. He's, oh my God, he's so cute. He's got such a, a sweetness to, I don't, I keep calling it a, a boy. I, I call it a boy because I have boy dogs. So I think every dog I meet is always a boy until I learn otherwise. And so we're gonna, again, this is the gray and the white on my brush right now. This is a great transition into that light fur that I'm gonna be putting on the top in just a second here. Uh, we got this in through here. Ooh, we're moving in. 
we're moving up oh, a couple little gray and white pieces right above the um, the ears and the eyes before I go I, I really have a hard time moving into white until I'm fully ready so right now I'm working my way there with this brush <laughs> so goddamn cute something like that these little fun pieces coming up and through here a uh, couple little fun pieces out the sides of the ears lots of little fun pieces lots of little fun pieces and then the little fluff on top of the head that goes in front of the ear like that a little bit in through here okay we're moving in we're moving into that white stuff just a little slut there okay here we go we're going we're going in I'm gonna I just wipe my brush off I'm picking up some white and dabbing it on my paper towel I don't really need any white in through there I don't need any white there I just need it on the top I think and I don't need even need a lot so just little kind of speckles up and through here just to give that um, additional dimension and just little itty bitty pops of it that was even too much in through there maybe just a little bit here so this is where you know if you um, are nervous about the white just you could certainly use uh, which I always like to be nervous about the white because once you know you you've done all of this work to put all of this dimension in it and then if you you can't get any lighter than white so when when I'm adding my light spots I for me they, they only pop as much as they can pop if they're next to a contrasting color. So if I want that white to pop, I can't have anything else next, you know, it, it can't be on top of white because then you just won't see it. So I just kind of try and make sure that I reserve those, you know, those special white marks for, for last. And then that way I've got all that dimension that I want. I feel I just need a tiny bit more lightness over here. I'm going back into my blonde just for a second here. Just a little, little extra lightness right in through here just to get that to so we can see that side of the face there we go and then maybe some of that custom custom new color and then i would just be fiddling so the rest is all going to be just fiddling so once you've got it to this stage and you know you can certainly uh make it any more cute I don't know if you can possibly make it more cute. He's just so cute or she's so cute. <laughs> but once you've got it into a place that you're comfortable, oh, I'm going black. Hold on one second. Black for one second just to pull down um, those couple of little pieces that um, are on top. So just an itty bitty bit of black. I felt like there was um, just a little uh, defining ones that I needed in through here. And then I think I think that's all I'm gonna do I think that's all she wrote it's so cute maybe a little touch around those eyes and then um, we're gonna use our tiny brush for the next step so once you've got this done fiddle with it as much as you feel is important to fiddle with it and then you can um, put this brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so we are on to the final step this is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm going to use my small round, my number three round. I'm going to be signing this in the bottom left corner with black paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you, of course, can sign yours however you want. You can sign it with a date. You can sign it with your full name. You can make up a fun symbol. Whatever you want as your identifying mark is up to you because it is your painting and you get to mark it however you would like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself an adorable terrier and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.